What if the Straw Hat Pirates never met Monkey D. Luffy? So why don't we start off with the first mate, Roanoa Zoro. What would happen to Zoro if he never met Luffy? Well, that is actually quite simple. This is one of the easier ones to answer. Zoro would have died in Shelltown at the hand of Aftan Morgan. He would have either starved to, to, to death, or more likely he would have been killed due to the execution date being moved up by Aftan Morgan. So again, Zoro wouldn't make it very far in the world without Luffy. Because obviously, nobody else was going to save the evil pirate hunter Zoro. Because as stated by Kobe, the entire East Blue is afraid of Zoro. They think he's some kind of demon. Now of course, there always is the chance that he actually does survive. And if that does happen, if he does survive, I would say, in all likelihood, he would survive, and then he would just continue wandering around the East Blue. And maybe he would go to the Grand Line eventually to, you know, pursue Mihawk and get killed. But Zoro wouldn't make it very far. One of the reasons Zoro got so strong was because he fought in so many battles against all these opponents, because Luffy was always picking fights with people like Crocodile and Big Mom, currently in the manga, and Gekko Moria, and CP9, and Eneru, and just, he was getting stronger because of those fights, and without all those battles, and all that training, and all those experiences, he probably wouldn't go that far, he wouldn't go that, he wouldn't even get close to Mihawk in the Grand Line, and I'm gonna be honest with you, I don't know if he would go to the Grand Line if it wasn't for Luffy, I just don't know if he would, maybe he would eventually, but he wouldn't stand a chance. So now let's talk about my boy Usopp. Now Usopp is dead. I'm sorry, he, Usopp is going to die. There's no way around it. Kuro would, into, would go through with his plan, kill Kaya, take her money, and probably end up killing Usopp if Usopp would try to save Kaya. You know, let's all be honest, Usopp is probably in love with that woman. Seriously. That was heavily implied. Even for One Piece. Like, Usopp had something for Kaya. Let's be legitimate. But no, but Usopp would have died perfecting Kaya. Kaya would have died and Kuro would kill her. And we get yeah, there's no alternate outcome. Unlike with Zoro where there's a chance at him living, there's no one on the island that could save Usopp in this situation. Zoro himself could get out of that. Couldn't possibly get out of that. Usopp just no. Usopp, no, he Usopp is dead. So let's move on to Sanji. Yeah, Black Leg Sanji, or should I say Sanji Vinsmoke. Sanji would probably just spend the rest of his life on Madarate, honestly, cooking with death and repaying his debt to death. Because when you really think about it, Sanji at that point in time didn't believe he had even come close to paying off his debt to death. Like, he didn't feel like he could leave the Barate. It was only due to Luffy and that influence that he left, but Luffy was the one that opened his mind to the idea like, hey, maybe I could go to the Grand Line and find the All Blue and achieve my dream. It is no, it's like Sanji would probably just spend the rest of his life flirting with women and the cooking of a barate and never achieve anything in life. In fact, Sanji's life would really suck. Now, maybe something will go down with his family. I don't think so, though. They'll probably never find him. Ever. Who knows? Maybe we'll get information later on in the manga that could change this. But at the moment, yeah, he would just never leave the Barate. If he didn't meet Luffy and his life would be boring. Just cook food on the Barate and flirt with women for the rest of his life. Probably take over the business when that passes away. But let's move on to Cap Burglar Nami, and this is where we start getting into the really depressing territory. So what would happen with Nami is that Nami would continue to gather treasure, and then eventually, at, at the same time she did in the series, she would return to Kogarashi Village to leave her treasure that she found in, her, in the Tangerine Grove at Nojiko's house, or Bellamy's house, to be more precise. And see, and it would be Nojiko's house now, but it used to be Bellamere's house, but whatever. The point is, is that she would leave it there, and then the Marine would, that Arlong hired would show up, steal the treasure, you guys know how this goes down, Luffy paid no part in this, Arlong is an asshole, really due to be a vanquished sister tiger. 
So again, Arlong would still be an asshole, and he would still backstab Nami and steal all of her treasure. So then Nami would attempt to uh, stop everybody from going after Arlong, and they would, you know, Gendo would get would hug her, and that would happen. Then when she breaks down and starts st stabbing her arm, the only difference is she would probably end up. Honestly, I'm gonna be honest. Nami would probably end up killing herself. To be honest, she was uh, stabbing the Arlong tattoo, and Arlong would most likely they. they they were antagonizing Arlong. Arlong was going to kill them. Let's be honest. Arlong was going to kill all of them. That probably, that probably would have happened. Arlong would kill everybody in Kokorashi Dillon. And he would either make Nami his slave or, or Nami would kill herself. Probably number two. Honestly. Yeah, so that is really, really depressing. Yeah, it, it only gets the worst. For some of these characters, which is kind of shocking considering we're talking about suicide right now. Um, what well, pool would have killed Chopper? That's it. There's literally nothing more I had to say with Chopper. Robin would have died at the hand of Crocodile. Yeah. And if she somehow managed to escape Crocodile, she would have eventually, most likely, been caught by the government, probably by CP9. Or Alkiji, either one. But only reason they got away from Alkiji was because of Luffy and the debt he he owed. He felt he owed Luffy for taking out a crocodile. So yeah, Robin would either die at the hand of Alkiji, the world government, or a crocodile. So yeah, Robin is a screwed. Frankie would have probably just wandered around Water Seven, being like a mafia boss. Like being like the head of the Frankie family, kind of being an asshole for the rest of his life. If that's actually kind of pathetic, the way Frankie would live his life. He lived his life in like guilt of, the, of everything that he did as a kid. And just wandering around Water 7 aimlessly and just scrapping ships. And yeah, he'd probably never build a ship again. He, he, he would even he would never build the study, that for sure. He didn't even have the money to build the study under any normal circumstances. And I am very sorry for the sirens in the background. There's a lot of sirens in the background tonight. I don't know why. As for Brooke, he had two options. He would either die, which I'm not even sure. Can Brooke even die? That's besides the point. The point is that Brooke would either die or if in the left of his life on that sh on that ghost ship of the former rum bar pirate alone. It's really messed up. I mean, there's always the small, small chance that another pirate crew would stumble upon Brooke that would want to help him, but Brooke probably wouldn't even want to join that crew. I mean, there was something special about Luffy that made Brooke wear his allegiance to him. I don't think Brooke is doing that for just anybody. But yeah, I mean, that's depressing as hell, but yeah, Brooke would either be alone for the rest of eternity, or until he dies, or is killed. I'm 100% I'm sure Brooke can be killed, but when, I don't know, dying of age, I don't know if Brooke can die of age, honestly. Which is probably the most disturbing part about it, that would mean Brooke would be alone on that ship forever. Oh my god, and half the people that did find him would probably not even give enough of a shit or be too afraid of the talking skeleton to try to help him. But, um, yeah, that's about it. That is, this is, I, as I have stated in the video, this is where the straw hack would be. Most of them, if not all of them, would be dead. The only straw hack that really has a chance of making it on their own is Zoro. He'd be all, and, and Sanji. I mean, some of them would survive. But the only one that really has a chance of getting anywhere on his own is Zoro, but he had already set out on his journey. But the only other character that I can get, I would guarantee would live would be Sanji and Frankie. And even then, it's like Sanji would just be cooking with Arate, Frankie would just be wander, wandering Water 7 and just stealing ships and killing and hurting people and just being a general asshole. And Zoro would probably escape the Marines and survive, but eventually he would probably get himself killed. So yeah, that's where all the straw hacks would be if they had never met Luffy. Luffy is very important. He is he is the reason they're all they're all alive. That's one of the reasons they initially that's one of the reasons they all kind of initially joined Luffy.
because he saved their life, and they kind of feel like they feel a debt to him. A lot of them join Luffy out of a sense of respect, but later on, and eventually becomes because they're loyal and they want to make a dream come true, but just a good majority of them join him out of debt, at least in the beginning of and then they go to respect him. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Tell me your thoughts. Did I miss anything? Do you guys think something there would be a different outcome from a straw hat if they didn't meet Luffy? And above all else, guys, have a great day. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe for more video. Remember to follow me on Twitter. The link to my Twitter is in the description box down below. And above all else, guys, have a great day. This is One Big Nation signing out.